within the realm of uh, unitary CFDs. So typically, what happens is that whenever, um, if you have a continuous spectrum, uh, that can arise either in the case of, let's say, just the, uh, the simple example is just the free boson. Right? But uh, there's more than a few examples, such as the large volume limit of a uh, supersymmetric nonlinear signal model. On the, <coughs> no, let's say with the 2 comma 2 uh, super symmetry, which guarantees uh, a non-trivial uh, super theory, typically, and um, in a large volume limit, uh, you have a, a large volume limit of a nonlinear signal model. I mean, uh, this large volume limit may not, may not exist. The large volume limit means that there's exactly marginal deformation that takes you to a regime where it looks like free boson, free, free field theory. Are you saying for this model in particular, it's like all the time? Uh, for, I mean, in this case, it's a limit, but, but there are other non-trivial examples where, where there's a gap. So in this case, there's no gap because you can have uh, a modes of arbitrarily small weight or arbitrarily close to zero because the volume is large. Um, I mean, to any other approximation, the, the scalar spectrum is given by the Laplacian, eigenvalues of Laplacian on the target space. But, uh, uh, but a much more non-trivial example uh, is uh, either Liouville theory, uh, or um, which we'll discuss, um, or um, like sometimes for so say for the two comma two linear signal model, uh, the target space develops certain type of singularity. So in the case of I think we'll, we'll mention both of these. So in the ca case of the say take K three target space, the target space can develop ADE singularity. In the case of the Calabi out threefold target space could develop a conical singularity. In both cases, uh, in that limit the CFD uh, spectrum become degenerate. So, so th there'll be a large number of primaries with distributed weights that kind of accumulate uh, to a, into a continuum, but the continuum starts above a gap. Uh, and one can understand precisely uh, what those gap values are. Uh, it's a very non-trivial statement. Um, but in that case, you have a family of compact CFDs, but they approach, they they approach a limit where um, uh, there's a continuum that uh, develops in the spectrum. I guess I'm starting? Yes, absolutely. So we can get started with our uh, first talk of the day. Take it away, Sheets. So um, we're now going to discuss um, unitary representation of the Virasora algebra. Um, so as I ended up uh, uh, in yesterday's lecture, um, we have uh, uh, the states or local operators in the CFT can be organized into representations of the Verasora algebra. So in every irreducible representation of this Verasora algebra, there's a uh, primary state which has the lowest weight uh, among all the states in that representation. Uh, for now, I'm, go I'm going to focus on the holomorphic sector of the Verasora algebra. And uh, as I pointed out last time, uh, when you map the uh, from the plane to the cylinder. On the cylinder, uh, the Ln Hermitian conjugate is L minus N. And therefore, uh, if we demand the representation is unitary, we need to demand a positive definite norm on the, um, on the uh, space or of representation, uh, which means that uh, states like, like this, where you uh, generally act on a, ver act a Virasoro chain on the primary, that's a generic state, um, that state should have positive norm um, and the norm will be defined by, and so you can always normalize the primary to have, say, a unit norm, and um, then you just uh, take the Hermitian conjugate of, of this and take the inner product, but you have to remember that the Hermitian conjugate of Ln is L minus N. Okay, uh, so um, now um, let's study, oh, by the way, um, just, just to say one more thing, um, the, under the state operator mapping, this uh, primary state is mapped to a, I guess I call it phi, let's say, a primary operator. Um, and uh, let's say at the origin on the plane. And so here I'm only keeping track of the holomorphic weights. There's also anti holomorphic weights, which I will ignore for the moment since I'm only discussing holomorphic uh, part of the Verasoro algebra. Um, and then, uh, under a conformal transformation uh, labeled by z goes to z prime, of, uh, which is a holomorphic function of z, so as we briefly alluded to yesterday, a finite conformal transformation, which we form by composing an infinite set of infinitesimal conformal transformations, uh, can be labeled by a homor holomorphic diffeomorphism. We just compose this z goes to z plus epsilon z, and um, the 